Hey, hello and welcome to this new After Effects tutorial by Promotion. And today we are going to take a look on how to recreate this effect from 13 Reasons Why. So just follow me into After Effects. So and over here let's directly start by creating all of this from scratch. So what I have here is just the footage of the intro and I'm going to simply drag and drop it onto this icon here and this will create a new composition that matches our settings. So we are at full HD, 25 frames a second. And as you have seen, this technique that I'm going to show you today is really, really flexible. So you can add in stuff that it looks like the intro from 13 Reasons Why, like in this example here. You can add in pumpkins so that it looks like some scene of Harry Potter, but you can also create this really cool look from the new Eminem music video. And for this tutorial, we are going to start with the 13 Reasons Why version, because this version works without any plugin. And for the other versions, we need to have the plugin called Element 3D installed, because then we can import 3D objects, which is really, really cool. And I'm going to show you that at the end, once we have set up all of this. So before we kickstart this, if you like what you see over the next 10 minutes, then just click that nice subscribe button and in that way I can do way more of those tutorials and I really love doing those. So let's get started. The first thing we have to do here is to track our scene in 3D space. So we can create a 3D camera that does exactly the same movement like the camera did in that shot. So walking around my table here and coming closer to my face. This is really easy. Let's just search for the effect called camera tracker and just drag and drop it onto our footage and it directly starts analyzing in background. And that means if you have another comp or you want to work on something else, you could do that and After Effects analyzes in the background. You could also go into the advanced settings here and just hide this banner so you can just keep on working while After Effects is doing all that advanced stuff. Also you can see in here how long it takes for the tracking. It tells me that it takes about one minute and you can see where exactly you are and I'm just quickly going to skip this forward. And now we are done and is solving the camera which should only take a few seconds. And there we are. So what do we see here? We see many of those colored crosses and they should stay on the points that they have tracked. We already see that the crosses that are closer to the camera, like the ones on that skull, are bigger than the ones in the background. So they are already positioned in 3D space, which already tells us that this has worked pretty nice. Now let's quickly scrub through the clip and see if there are some points that are wrong. For example, you can see that it tracked me over here, so I can just click on that one and hit the delete button. Then it's quickly resolving it, but as I told you, you can work while it is solving. And I'm just going through this and deleting points that I think will distract the tracking. Basically, it's just points that are not on fixed objects in the shot. And this is looking perfect at the moment. So next thing, that we could do is simply create a camera and then it would try to create the camera according to all the tracking points that it has found. So as it knows that those points are closer to the camera than this one's, After Effects figures out a way to exactly know where the camera should be. But I am normally doing this a little bit different. You see when I'm hovering over those points, you can see that it, it shows me those circles and I can create them by clicking on three points while holding down control and I'm at the moment choosing points that are on the table and as soon as I have three points it shows me this plane and now I can right click and say create solid and camera and I'm just doing this extra step for me so that I can have a visual indicator on how good the track is. So let's just click it and I can click away now and you see that it has created this track solid and let's just make it a little bit bigger and apply the grid effect. And again, this is just for me to verify if everything has worked the way I want it. Now let's just play this back. And this is exactly the way I wanted it to be. Perfect. 
as I told you, we start with the 13 reasons why example. So we add in pictures into 3D space. And I've already prepared some pictures. I have basically created some Polaroids that I can bring in. And let's just do this by dragging it into our composition. And for now, I can just hide the track solid. So this is a picture I took in Death Valley a few years ago. And let's just enable it for 3D. You just have a 3D switch over here. And if you can't see it, like I can't see it at the moment, just click on that toggle switches mode button. And there you have it, it's this cube here. And once I press it, so at the moment, I can only drag it up and down or X and Y. But as soon as I hit that button, it is in 3D space. So I have Y, X and Z. So I can push it closer to the camera or further away. So let's just play this back how it looks at the moment. You see the image is in 3D space, which is absolutely what we want. So let's just bring out one or two more and I can give you some tips while doing that. So let's bring out this one, which is a crabs that I shot in South Africa and also make this 3D. So at the moment, let's just hide this one. And let's say we want to add it to a specific point. Maybe we want to have it close to this T-Rex skull over here. So we can easily do that. So we just click on the footage that we have tracked and click on the camera tracker again. And here you see we have a lot of tracking points on the T-Rex. So let's just make a right click on that point and we create a null. Perfect. So we have a track null and let's call it the T-Rex so that we later on know what this is. And this sits in the 3D position of the T-Rex. So what can we do with that? That's an easy trick. Just hit P, then you have the position. Click on the position, hit Control C for copy, and then just go to the Polaroid, to our crabs, hit P again, and there we have the position and hit Control V for paste. Or you can also go to edit, copy and edit paste. So, and now when we play this back, the crabs Polaroid is sitting at the position of our T-Rex. Of course, we can scale it down by hitting S once we have selected the Polaroid and just bring it down to something like maybe 44 looks like a good size. And when we click on it and hit W, we can rotate it. When we hit the axis, let's just bring it up so we see it a bit better. And also I'm going to scale the other Polaroid to 44%. And let's just bring out another one, maybe this one here, which is the Milky Way with a shooting star that I shot on New Year's Eve in Australia, actually. Also make this 44% in scale. Hit the 3D switch and let's just bring it somewhere over here. May we just go to the middle of the clip and just reposition it. Okay, I think you got the idea. So let's just fine tweak this a little bit so that it looks more realistic. First thing that we can do is add motion blur to all of this. You see at the moment when the camera is panning across that image, it should have some motion blur. And there's nothing easier than that. Just click on the motion blur button. And there we have it because it automatically turns on motion blur for the whole composition. So we do the same for the other two. And a quick tip, if you think it's too much motion blur or you want to have more motion blur, you can go to the composition settings. So composition settings, and then you go to advanced. And here is your shutter angle. At the moment, it's 360 degrees and a normal shutter angle should be 180 degrees. So let's bring this to 180 degrees, which is the normal standard or the default for film cameras these days and hit OK. And this is what we have at the moment. So let's just quickly add a last image over here. Therefore, I'm again going to the track camera and maybe I want to have it like close to the camera somewhere here. I create a null, call it close. So let's maybe bring out this one which is an image of the Matterhorn that I shot last summer on a pretty cloudy day. Make it 3D, go to the close null object, copy the position and open the position for the Polaroid and paste it. Again, shrink it down and add motion blur. So two more things that I quickly want to show you before we jump into the 3D effect with a really cool plugin element. Let's add depth of field 
and also some light. So the easiest thing is the depth of field. Just go to the camera options and here you have a depth of field and turn it on. Oh, and we see nothing. So here's a trick that I normally do. I crank up the aperture as well as the blur level because then we can see where our focus point is. Also bring up the blur level. Just keep in mind the higher you have those values, the slower it will render. And now it's just a matter of finding the right focus distance. So the point from the camera to the Polaroids where it should be in perfect focus. And I would say as we have our crabs here on the T-Rex, that one should be in focus because the T-Rex is also pretty much in focus. So I'm just sliding this. Now you see that our T-Rex as well as the crabs look like they are on the same focal distance. Yes, that looks perfect. And now you see it's just too much out of focus. So we bring down the aperture again until we have something that we think looks convincing or in other words, that looks realistic. So let's watch this. Okay, really nice. So last but not least, let's just add in a light. So in therefore, let's just create a new layer and a new light because we want to have the images react to the light in a way that it looks more natural. Let's add a point light and hit OK. And now let's just position that. And you can also go to two views. And here you see here is our camera. Here are our images and here's our light. So let's position our light somewhere where it should be. And I know that the table is somewhere around here. And my light source is, I have a window over here and over here. So let's just move that somewhere over here. And now we can play with the light options. So we make the radius bigger. So the radius defines the distance, how far the light actually reaches. By bringing this up, you can see at around the 4,000 mark, maybe even 5,000, it starts reaching all the images. And now we can just play with the intensity. Okay, now this looks really nice that we have like a bright spot here and the other ones are darker. But as I told you, I have a light coming in from here and from there. So let's just duplicate this and bring it over there. And now we ha just have to play with the intensity of both of the lights because they both add together to a strong light now. So let's just bring down both of those. And last but not least, let's maybe just rotate this so it also catches a little bit more light. So let's switch back to one view and look what we have created. And let's just quickly make a fine tweak here. At the five second mark, I should be in focus. So I set a mark here, but at six seconds it would be pretty nice to have the milky way in focus and then over here i could be in focus again let's keyframe our focus distance we go to the camera options and to the focus distance and we can copy and paste it already on our third marker go to the middle one and again just play with the focus distance so remember we had the distance to the t-rex so the distance should be way shorter now so we just go down with it Okay, and what we see now is that when we would focus on that Polaroid so close to the camera, the background should be that much out of focus. So let's bring the background out of focus with a camera lens blur. And let's bring it onto our footage. So by default, unfortunately, it is already set to 5. So let's just make a keyframe and bring it to 0 because at that point in time, we want to be completely sharp. Hit U to see that keyframe. Click on the keyframe, copy and paste it onto our three mark. Then we go to the two and now just bring it up until it matches our Polaroid over here. Maybe something like 16. And you see it kind of blurs the border of the frame a little bit strange, but you can change that by clicking on that repeat edge pixels button. And that is solved. So now let's just play this back. I'm just going to the 10 second mark and hit N for end. And that way our preview will only do the 10 seconds just for the sake of this tutorial. And you can see all of this could use a little bit fine tweaking, but I hope 
you get the idea of that. So a really nice focus pull. You have all the pictures hanging in 3D space. Absolutely great. So now let's go to the advanced part of this tutorial, which is adding in 3D objects. And as I told you, we are going to do that with a really, really great plugin from Video Copilot called Element 3D. So I'm just hiding all of those Polaroids and I'm actually going to hide them with that nice button here. So when I click on that man, he hides behind the wall. And if I click on him over here, everything is hidden. Comes in super handy. So we have tracked everything, we have set up the lights. So let's just bring out our element 3D layer. Therefore we create a new layer, call it element, make it comp size. Now it's full HD, hit OK. And we search for the plugin called element and drag and drop it onto our layer. And now we click on scene setup. So in here, let me just quickly show you what this plugin is capable of doing. You have like a 3D space and you can orbit around it really, really easy. And you can create like cubes and stuff. And once you hit the OK button, they will be inside of your composition and also react to the 3D camera, 3D lights and everything. You can add materials to it. So this is really, really great stuff. I highly recommend you that plugin. It's not that expensive and it really helps in many, many cases. You can also, as you see here, extrude. You can bring make titles like for a trailer or something. Just type in a really cool title, then extrude it and you have it in 3D space. You can have the letters flying in and all that crazy stuff. But back to work. Let's just delete that one. So let's create the Eminem look. And for that, I need a knife, a 3D knife. And Video Copilot also happens to have a free Halloween pack. And I have installed it. And you can see that they have eyeballs, chainsaws, and also knives. And by just clicking on it, you can see that we have a really nice looking knife over here. And for those of you who are interested, I'd quickly show you how I customize this a little bit more because it looked a little thin to me. So I just clicked on the knife and scaled it up on the X scaling. And for the material, I just brought up the bump a little bit more. So what a bump is doing in really easy words, it fakes as there would be cracks and all those uneven parts on the metal or on everything basically. You will see it once I'm cranking this up. At the moment it's set to 3% and you can see when I'm bringing this up really, really high, you see that at the moment it looks like we have more dimensions to it. I can work with that, but now it's a little bit too reflective for me at least. So I go into the reflection and bring that down a little bit. Great. We could also work on the wood part and all of that, but for the sake of this tutorial, as I told you, we are just going with this default, just with those small tweaks in our bump map and hit OK. So now we go back to the first frame and we see that we have our knife over here. And at the moment it is already blurred a little bit because it is reacting to our camera already. So let's quickly turn the depth of field off and there we have our knife. And let's go into the element effect again. I have created the knife in group one, which is the default. So at the particle replicator, I can set up how many knives I wanna have. And for the replicator shape, I don't wanna have a point because then they are all coming from the same point, which doesn't make sense for my effect. So I want to have a grid. And at the moment it's three by three by three. That's looking fine to me. And we can just scale this. Okay, now we have 27 knives and we want to rotate all of this so that they are all looking into my direction. Maybe let's scale them more and have a quick look what we have so far. Okay, they could be closer to me. So we can go to the position Z and just bring it closer. And maybe we wanna make the knives even bigger and we can do that in the particle look. So particle replicator is fine for now. 
That's how many particles and which positions they are and how far they are spread from each other. And the particle look defines the single particle. So let's just make it bigger. And here we could also play with rotation and stuff. So we could bring all of that a little bit up and then just go to the randomness. So they're not all exactly in the same direction. Also, we can turn on motion blur and it will also already react to it. So with or without, I think we can see it a little bit better in the beginning. Yes, maybe over here you can see it pretty nice. And maybe we bring all of this up a little bit more. And you can see that all of this also reacts to light. So really cool. You can also customize this even more. You could go to the render settings and there you have a lot of different things you could add. You can change the lightning to some presets like this one I really like with all the highlights. That's maybe a little bit too much dramatic. And now let's turn on our camera again. And you see, for example, over here, what's closer to camera gets out of focus. And let's quickly work a little bit more on our focus pull here because, of course, the knife isn't in the same position as our Polaroid was. So let's just find the focus distance. Let's just play our final version back. And this is already the end of this tutorial. So I really hope that you learned something today and got inspired. And if you got, then feel free to subscribe to my channel because then I can do way, way more of those really nice tutorials and share some tips and tricks with you. And I really love doing that. So now I wish you a lot of fun in the 3D space in After Effects.